Okay, the next talk is about uh, an IDS on the network level for Androids and yeah, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, hello, uh, we're gonna, I'm here to present the Android IDS. It's, a, uh, it's mobile security reloaded. Uh, first of all, let me present myself. I'm Jaime Sanchez, uh, I'm a passionate about computer security and I've been working for almost uh, uh, more than uh, 10 years with national and international companies as a trainer, as a, a professional consultant. Um, I'm, I'm from Spain and if you want to follow me, please don't, uh, don't use the method of Seba uh, tracking my, blue, my Bluetooth. Please use my Twitter account and you can follow me on my blog. And been a, a speaker for several conferences like BlastCat, DEFCON. And uh, uh, next week I, I will be with another speaker at Black Hat Sao Paulo. So uh, let me uh, uh, speak about the motivations for the research. The first thing is about that the smartphones uh, has evolved into sophisticated mini, mini computers. Do you remember the mobile phones when they were supposed to use it to call people? Do you, do you remember the Nokia 5110 that it was supposed to only uh, uh, phone people and only send text message, but well, that, that's over. We are uh, in a new generation of mobile devices that uh, store all our sensitive information, all our private information, all of our contacts, all our emails. Uh, we do all the bank transactional uh, uh, things with our mobile phone. We can uh, put our alarm of our house. We, we do everything uh, with, our, with our mobile phones. So uh, every year, uh, there are tons and millions of uh, mobile devices that are sold. And uh, we can see that um, uh, these mobile phones are susceptible to several uh, PC-like uh, attacks. Uh, you know, like almost 80% of the, of the Android applications are uh, vulnerable to, to many in the middle for SSL. So there are a lot of cr uh, crashes uh, about the browsers and uh, in the operating system that belongs to uh, PC computers and our mobile phones. So uh, the, the importance of security mechanism are still not uh, uh, yet understood because you think uh, that your mobile phone is only something you use to call your, uh, your family, your friends, to use Facebook, but you, you don't realize that there are policies like bring your own device. So how, how many people doesn't uh, take his mobile phone to the work? So you can be um, infected in your house, then go into your uh, uh, enterprise network and then infect and get all the information that you work stolen. So the security mechanisms are not sufficient. Uh, there are a lot of uh, platforms in, in mobile phones, you know. Uh, there's Nokia, there's iOS, Android, um, it's Blackberry, we have Windows Phone. But uh, I selected Android. Uh, why Android? Um, because Android is very, very, very popular uh, uh, for the last years. And being popular it is, isn't always a, a good thing. Why? Because uh, the malware um, and the threats are clearly on the rise. The attackers are trying to experiment with, with new uh, business models and are trying to uh, put his focus instead of the computers, putting on the mobile phones because they think that uh, they, they will be more vulnerable. Uh, in the second quarter of uh, 2012, uh, there were sold more than, more than uh, 100 uh, Android devices. They have a market set uh, of uh, more than 50%. So these targets are, are very, very difficult for the, for the attackers to, to resist. So let's talk about the platform. Android uh, has the powerful base system from the Linux kernel. You know, it, it, it inherits the memory management, the multitasking, uh, the file management, uh, and it's a, a, technology, a technology that embraces um, a, a great number of, of, of technologies like the Dalby virtual machine, uh, you can program in Java, you can do it in C++, and has a, a process unit component uh, that provides the system function and server pro uh, process. Uh, it's, it's done uh, with a thing that they call binder. Uh, it's a new thing they developed instead of using the IPC of the sockets uh, or, or, or pipes in Linux, uh, and it's done because of the, because of, uh, because of the performance. So this is what uh, the official Android uh, website says. 
they say that Android 6 to be the most secure and, and usable operating system for mobile platform by repurposing traditional operating system security, etc. There are a lot of things uh, every mobile phone should do. It's protect your user data. So you have uh, information of your credit cards, your bank accounts, your contacts, and should be uh, protected in your, in your mobile phone. It should protect the system resources. So it should protect to the network. That, that's the point that we are going to see in the next slides. It should provide the, the application installation. In this case, in Android, it is, this is done by using uh, each process has uh, an individual sandbox. <coughs> and uh, as they say, Android provides some kind of security features that are mandatory application setbox, as I have said, security inter-process communication through the binder. Uh, you have to sign the application, but there has been some problems with that uh, with the Android master key. Uh, and every application must tell us uh, what kind of what, what kind of permissions uh, does it need to, to work. So this is uh, done in a hierarchy. Uh, this is several levels, and it, each component assumes that the component before has been doing uh, his work properly. But there is a problem. There is a massive grow of the volume of malware families and samples, and um, the difference between uh, the Apple Store and the Google Play is that they have um, uh, developed the Bouncer. Bouncer is supposed to be uh, some kind of uh, intelligence that try to, uh, to know if an application is a malware or it's a good application. And there has been a lot of uh, ways to, to, to trick it. So, but this is the only problem with Android. It's not only the malware. As you can see, these are the versions 1, 2, and 3 of uh, uh, Android. And you can see that this, there has been a lot of exploits and vulnerabilities. The, uh, there are remote code execution, privilege escalation. They have denial of service in the Dalvik uh, virtual machines, a denial of service in the SMS. There are a lot of things. Uh, I didn't put the, the, the version 4 just because I, I didn't have enough space in the, in the slides. But there are some of the things that have been very important. The USSD exploit, we will see. There is a poor uh, SSL implementation on, on, the, on the Android uh, platform. Almost 80% uh, of, the, of the applications uh, are, are vulnerable to many in the middle attacks. So you can uh, extract all the sensitive information. Uh, there has been some kernel mode driver exploits. Uh, some uh, vulnerabilities in the NFC that could compromise the, the mobile phone. The problem with the Android master key that has been, uh, I think I, I, it has been patched by Android like three times. There are three variants of the exploit. And the last thing is the interpreter model for Android. N not only this, but uh, day by day, we can see that there are new exploits coming in the mobile phone to own uh, they have uh, uh, developed uh, uh, two exploits, one for the Nexus uh, for Chrome, that uh, it exploits an integral overflow, and the other one uh, results into a full uh, escape of the, of the sandbox and remote execution. There has been another problem with the default uh, applications installed in the Galaxy S4 that could uh, lead to, to get some uh, um, personal information of your, of, of your device. So, I decided that I, I could do anything better than the things I have seen. So I was looking in Google, and I came to the first version of the, of the application that was to create a VPN channel between the Android device and my computer. As you can see, the VPN goes to, the, to my computer and my computer to the internet connections. Uh, I used the digital certificates uh, with a public and a private key just to authenticate the mobile phone in my computer. Uh, uh, this is done because uh, we, we are supposed to give some flexibility because if someone loses his uh, phone, in this way you can um, delay it um, very easily. And once the BPL channel um, is stabilized, we can begin like uh, analyzing all the traffic that our mobile phone uh, is, is sending. So uh, I tried to get the uh, uh, two, two, two uh, base signatures. The first one was the, the official of uh, Snort, and the second one is the uh, emergent threats. And I use uh, some programs like TCP dump 
and the other one uh, was Wiresark to have a, a complete review of all the data that was sent in. But I failed because there is a problem. Uh, I, I, I'm capable of analyzing all the traffic, okay? The, but I can, um, uh, and I can act like an IPS. I can block when I can discover uh, uh, any bad traffic. I can um, send uh, notifications to the user. And the other thing is like, well, this is uh, great if you are in your home or in your uh, corporate network, but when you are uh, on the street, you have to send and receive traffic from the 3G connection and then duplicate it to your server. So uh, if you normally use like a one uh, gigabyte of information as two, you, have, uh, you, you must duplicate uh, the, the bandwidth because you have to send uh, the information to your computer and to the internet. So for me, uh, life continued. I continue doing any other things. And um, this is the way I, I, I found how I could uh, uh, do the IDF thing with Android. Uh, I went to the Black Hat, to the Arsenal. I was presenting a, a tool that was supposed to defeat the Nmap uh, uh, fingerprinting and POF and some commercial appliance because the Nmap internal proofs uh, have the, the, this kind of fields. You have uh, to be able to uh, modify and check uh, things uh, in your packets like the options, uh, window size, uh, you have to um, uh, put the default uh, fragment bit on or off. You have to expect to um, uh, modify the TTL. And it, would, it was the same thing in the POF. In the POF, you have to analyze the window size, the TTL, the POF fragment, the, pack, the whole packet size. And very important in this thing is that you have to put the um, TCP options uh, in some kind of order uh, to to, to make it work. So, let's see. I have to do uh, everything uh, of this, and I have to modify and intercept all the traffic in real time. So, I came with a solution. I, I, I began uh, programming this in Perl, then I go to C, then I go to Python, you know, it's that, that kind of things uh, people do. I see that uh, we are putting Nmap. I am going to fool and try to act like Microsoft Windows 95. You're going to see it here. It's Microsoft uh, Windows 95. Just to, to know that uh, people can say, hey, you have trick with the signatures, OK? With Windows 7. I didn't modify the signatures, it's been read. In this case, our Linux system is a, a Windows 7. So I came to this idea, and when I was uh, presenting, I, I thought, well, I have developed our, our tool that has nothing to do with Android, but I need to uh, process the traffic and modify it in real time before it gets inside the Android device or it goes outside to the network. So. And uh, I can redirect all the traffic uh, from kernel space to the user space, and I can do whatever, whatever I want with the packets. And I can do it in real time. I can uh, run it continuously. It uh, doesn't need uh, a human supervision. So why cannot use uh, this technique to develop an IDS? I could det detect the traffic in real time. I could block the packets. I could do whatever I want um, with the network traffic. So I got it. The only difference was that I, I was supposed to write the program in, per, uh, in C again, because there is no Perl and Python bindings for Android. So let, us, let me explain how is, the, how is this, this done. As you know, the computers uh, provide different levels of, of access to the resource. And this is done um, uh, by, this is enforced by SS CPUs uh, to provide the difference level uh, by hardware. So there are some kind of rings that goes from the most privileged, that is the ring zero, to the less privileged, that is uh, uh, the number, the higher number. So why are telling you this? Because in this case, uh, all the all the traffic are in kernel space. You can you can do the trick in user space because you are unable to uh, touch any kind of traffic that doesn't belong to your application. So kernel space is strictly. Uh, 
uh, reserved for running the kernel, the extension, the drivers. It's where, where we can connect to the, to the hardware devices. Um, and the user space, it's that kind of uh, space that uh, the application, our application runs. So if uh, we, can, we must do anything with, to interact with the kernel, uh, with, the, with the hardware, we have to let the, the kernel know and make some uh, kind of calls. So this is like more or less the map of the networking storage and so but man, this is, this is very complicated. So I will try to explain to you the, the thing uh, the, or how a packet goes from the uh, uh, network interface card to your application. I call it how I made your packets. At first, uh, you have your uh, a, a packet coming. It goes to your uh, NIC memory. I don't know if you can see it from from there, but it goes to to your NIC card, and in your NIC card, it can goes to an internal buffer or it can goes to a structure in, inside the kernel that it's a, a buffer memory that it's uh, put uh, using the direct uh, memory access, the DMA. Then. Uh, uh, when, when we detect that we have a packet waiting, we launch a soft IRQ and let the, the CPU uh, know that there is a new packet that uh, it will hold. It will call a hard uh, IRQ, will save the, res re the re uh, registers and will begin by analyzing all the, all the, all the packets. Uh, the next thing that you see is in the, in the path, uh, before entering the IP layer, there is a, all the all the um, uh, IP tables uh, change, uh, the packet must cross. Uh, you have the mangle, you have the forwarding uh, uh, chain, you have the input, uh, all, the, all the packets that go inside to our applications must pass uh, through the input chain. And then in go, it, it, it gets to the TCP IP uh, stack. It, here is the part where we analyze the headers, we analyze if we have a good checksums, and we, we are gonna be removing all the, all the data until we get to the user space that we search for our application and say, hey man, uh, who, has, uh, who is waiting for, for this kind of packets? And we pass it through uh, the user space. So in this thing, in, the, in, in this path, the only, the only part that we can uh, take uh, our work done is with the, with the IP tables. You know, uh, there are several extensions in the IP tables. The, the accept is just to uh, let the packet pass. The uh, drop, drop the packets. Reject is the same as drop, but tell the remote system that you have been dropping the packet. But there is one interesting that it's called Q. The Q uh, is a target which Q the packets from the uh, kernel space to the user space so you can process it. Uh, to know it, uh, this, uh, this is done into a fixed length uh, channel list. There are two, uh, two fields. One is an integer to identify the packet and the second is the metadata of the, of the packet. And there are two components that are needed uh, for this to work. One is the handler that deals with the mechanism of passing the packet from kernel space to uh, user space and the user space, uh, user space application that uh, have to take the packet and take any verdict to it. Uh, you, have to be, uh, <coughs> you have to take care of the length of the queue because it's like a 1,000 uh, size. And when the queue gets uh, completely filled, you are going to be discarding packets. So you can uh, create uh, several kind of, uh, of queues and go in uh, putting your packets inside of them. So, with this uh, theoretical intro to, to the NFQ that are gonna, uh, that's the what I'm gonna use, I will start presenting the uh, Android DS. I think that uh, the logo should be something like this, but please uh, don't make any decision when you're at Vegas because uh, uh, <laughs> I promise you that this is the, the official logo for the application. So. I promise that Android DS is a serious open source network based intrusion detection system and important it's a protection system that has the ability to uh, do real time traffic analysis and packet logging. That it should feature some kind of things that are protocol analysis. It should uh, they do uh, content searching and it should do to content matching. The architecture is very, is very simple. There is one sensor 
and one server. The sensor runs inside your Android device. There is no human supervision of the process. Uh, and it should do some kind of things like it should analyze all the traffic you are receiving and sending to the internet uh, with all, uh, letting all the, the user. It should uh, send push, um, some kind of a push alerts to your, to your Android, phone, uh, Android phone because uh, there is nothing to do if you're being attacked and you can uh, see on your screen. Uh, it's it gonna be, it's gonna um, report to a central login server and it should deploy some reactive actions. It can drop the, the packet that we can see that is being suspicious. It can add a new rule at the, at the internal firewall or it can launch uh, some kind of modules that uh, I'm implementing. Uh, it's gonna sync with the, with the server and this is very important that should uh, impose minimal overhead to the device because in this case uh, uh, we must uh, uh, think that we are inside a mobile phone and not all the mobile phones are like the Nexus uh, 5 that has a lot of cores, a lot of RAM, and if we begin like uh, enqueuing all the packets and we have all the, all the queue full and we cannot process all the traffic, we're gonna begin like dropping it. The other part of the, of the server, it's a Linux box. It's responsible of uh, sending the signatures, uh, storing the events in the database, detect the, the statistic anomalies, and you can do uh, here more things like you can implement a CM, and you can put all the traffic to the CM and do uh, any kind of uh, cross correlation, whatever you want, or you can store it in your Synlog server. And something that uh, I should work is in the col uh, collaborative detection, where when we have several uh, uh, mobile devices, uh, we can uh, see uh, what kind of malware is, uh, are being run, if it's gonna be infected in all the terminals. Uh, there are some reactive actions that could be interesting, like uh, uninstall directly the application that could be uh, found uh, with malware, kill the process. Uh, but another interesting thing is if the user doesn't uh, uninstall the application or doesn't let the, the, the process uh, uninstall the applications, disconnect the radios. So if you have a user that has been infected and, and doesn't uh, um, take your advice, you disconnect the radios remotely and block it so, so it cannot um, be launched anymore. Uh, another interesting thing is, is monitor uh, the syscalls, but here is a problem because uh, to monitor the syscalls, you have to find the, the address and when Android 1, Android 2, 3 are different uh, addresses and it depends on the manufacturer so there is no, no single way to, to make an universal um, plugin to monitor the syscalls. So I think the, this is gonna be delayed. So the first thing that it should do our, our, <coughs> our ideas is protocol analysis. Protocol analysis is analyzing all the traffic you have in your mobile phone, just looking for some kind of um, uh, characteristics that doesn't uh, adjust to the standard. In this case, uh, I have uh, analyzed a, a packet, I have uh, disassembled it, and you can see that it has the fin, the synchronization, the push and the urgent flags uh, activated. In this case, this, isn't, uh, this is not a, a, a good traffic, so we are gonna drop the packet and we are gonna report to the, to the remote server. Uh, I, I program all the fingerprint part for the, for the other tool, so I only have to port to C, and that the, this is the, the, the beginning of the tool. I have to fool only uh, 16 uh, proofs that NMAP, uh, NMAP was sent into to our computer, and that's what I did. There is an important thing that uh, you should know that is the, you have to, to have a root in your terminal, because there is, there is no way to uh, link to the IP tables uh, without being root. So uh, you have to push it uh, from your computer and launch it uh, uh, in the command line. I'm, I'm working on an on a, uh, application, a visual application that you could use to launch it, but still there's so much things to do and I think that the, graphic, the graphical part could wait. Uh, you see that I have launched an Nmap. In this case, they say it's a Linux box 2.6. And what we are going to do, we, are, we were detecting all the Nmap uh, analysis, and in this case, we're going to launch the uh, Android DS, and we're trying to fool the Nmap um, 
uh, and told uh, him that we are uh, another phone. You can see that they are detecting all the traffic. And the, uh, the, the result of the analysis of Nmap is the device is assigning Ericsson in bed. It's a uh, WB715. So we, are, we, have gonna be, we have been able to modify all the traffic in real time. We can take uh, all, the, all the rules from IP tables. And this is the, the interesting part that I just notify my Android to push all the alerts. So there, ha there has been two alerts. One is it's telling the, the user that it has been scanned from one uh, IP direction. And the second one is that it has been scanned from an IP direction. And we have used a reactive action that it's trying to fool the, the scan. Another thing that we should look is the pattern matching. Pattern matching is just uh, building a signature base. In this signature base, uh, we are going to uh, put all the strings that we want to search that are related to uh, some port related to some service. Uh, here, it, it could be very uh, interesting to implement the stateful uh, pattern matching, just to, to look for an, a string into an entire flow of, of, of the connection. But uh, this leads us to, to the signature format. Uh, I have built a, a custom uh, a signature format. Uh, it can be, uh, you can import all your, all your rules from Snort to this, uh, to this uh, kind of uh, signatures. I have added uh, one, uh, some, some signatures from Snort and from emerging threads. There are not so many interesting things in, in, in emerging threads for Android. And I have, have developed a script that takes all the, sorry. <laughs> I have developed a script that takes all the signature database and uh, converts it to something friendly for the, for the program. More examples. Android use after free remote code execution. This is uh, a vulnerability that uh, uh, saw the light like uh, several years ago because the, the browser of Android doesn't validate some kind of data when it uh, tries to free it, a uh, user can, can um, execute some arbitrary code. In this case, this is executed via uh, an HTML uh, that a user only has to visit, and you only have to put a netcat uh, uh, so, um, hearing in, in your local port, and you will have a cell in the device. The other thing that we, the, we spoke about was the USSD exploit. Um, the USSD codes are some kind of code that you can put inside your mobile phone just to perform any task. There are some tasks that the providers give you that it's like call for wording, the, to, to make inquiries to, the, to your invoices, or the same functionalities. And uh, this is the way that gets uh, into the HTML um, uh, website. And the, the remote exploit, what, what it's going to happen is that it will try to erase all the information of your mobile phone. So this is interesting, but we are going to see that we can uh, uh, develop and use some signatures from the, from, the, from the web service to try to detect and to block all these kind of signatures. Um, I, this is our, a real device that is working in Android 4, so there are some uh, things that won't work, like the use after free. But you can see that it, it's able to, to, to locate all the strings and the patterns belonging to this kind of exploits. The first thing that we are going to see is the use after free. You see? It, it has been detected like the CBA 2010-1807. And the Android for uh, that is the browser crash. It's a denial of service inside the browser. <coughs> and it has been uh, completely detected. And the other things that we are, we are trying to detect in these web uh, signatures is the USSD. I'm uh, inside the, the, the test uh, website. And you have uh, seen that the, the web attack, the USSD code, is, gonna be, is, is being um, uh, printed in the screen. In this case, it was only trying to, to show the email. But th the attack has been detected, and it has been blocked. And the last part is the, the part of the malware. I don't like the, the malware analysis, but I have to do it. And, and you can uh, take some malware examples and try to search for a patterns or a strings that uh, belongs to the applications. Uh, in this case, it was the SMS send. You can download it from any Russian page. You have to see that it's a double flash player 
in Russia, it's a double play new in Russia, etc. And once executed, it connects to some uh, uh, website with a pattern that it's rq.php and then sends all the email information, contacts, whatever she want. And the other thing that uh, we have been speaking is the Meterpreter. Meterpreter is a friend of us. It's deployed inside the uh, Metasploit. And this, uh, it's, it's a stager that goes inside an application that uh, could give you uh, things like a common story, and it lets you inject some kind of, uh, of process inside the, the remote uh, machine. So what we're going to do is try to see if we can detect all the things that meet the meterpreter uh, are using. The first thing, uh, as, uh, as you see in the other example, is you have to be root inside your mobile phone. And I don't know if maybe you can see it, but what, what, what we are doing is launch the, the Android DS, and we are putting the signatures like the, the in, in the Metapreter. We are logging it, and we have been using the Metapreter module. Uh, we are putting the, um, our computer to listen uh, to any connection. And the next thing we are going to see is uh, clicking inside the reverse TCP in our Android mobile. And we will expect to, to get a cell. You see? We are waiting, and now we have a interpreter inside our, our Android mobile phone. There are some kind of commands that you can uh, put inside your cell. For example, you can get all the local information. And um, every command that interpreter has inside, uh, there is a signature for it. So what, what we're going to see is that uh, we, we have to do the PS to get all the process running inside the mobile phone. And down, you can see that uh, the, the process list request has been detected by the Android IDS. It has some other features, like recording the microphone. It can uh, um, browse all the file system. It can also download uh, any file that you want. And any, any, anything that we, are, that we are seeing that we can do with Metapreter can be de detected by our Android DS because uh, we have a signature file for almost everything. In this case, we have a, a cell. But there is some important things that the example will go on and we'll try to block uh, all the attempts uh, made by the Metapreter or we, call, uh, we can to uh, block uh, one command. Uh, to block one, co one command, uh, the only thing we have to say is, hey, I want to block the, 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 the camera. I want you to browse all my file system, but if you try to connect to my camera, drop all the packets. Uh, this could lead to something very interesting, that is that uh, you can do any kind of jail for the interpreter, because if you get a connection and you know that this interpreter where it's inside your mobile phone, you can answer all the, all the requests that it's, uh, it's doing to you. So if it shows like, hey, send me a picture, you could take the, pro the program like, hey, send a fake picture with another, with another guy. And the last thing is that everything is going to be recorded inside the, the remote logger. It's going to be recorded inside the, telephone, the mobile phone, and it's going to be recorded and, and notified to the user, to the user in, the, in the Notify My Android. And um, I think that that's all. If you have uh, any question. Any questions from the audience? Um, since the idea stuff isn't really process cycle friendly, how much of my battery will get wasted? Not too much. I, I have uh, the last time that I was doing the performance test was in uh, August, and it was uh, like uh, five percent of the battery life. Because right now it's only analyzing some parts. There are some only uh, 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 some uh, not not all the modules are being activated, and it's like five percent. But you have to to be uh, to take care because. Uh, that's the reason I, I, I don't like to do the live demo with this system because if you get inside a Wi-Fi and you begin like uh, receiving a lot of traffic, it not, the problem is not that it's going to uh, consume all the CPU resource. The thing is that the, the mobile phone is not going to be capable of analyzing all the traffic it's been, re it's been receiving. So 
it will begin dropping all the traffic and it could be a mess. So uh, what, what I'm trying to do is to analyze only some kind of things, uh, some kind of patterns, and, uh, and, and try to optimize all the algorithm because it's, it's, it's not very important for the CPU uh, consumption. It's only important for, for the queue to not to get filled and begin dropping all the traffic that you receive. Questions? Um, question from me, is code available for that? What? Is, your, is code available for that from you? No, it's been, it's, it's been developed because I have, uh, this is the thing of, of doing this kind of things that I begin doing the main code and then I've been uh, doing the modules and I have to mix up. Okay. But so uh, it, I, I think that uh, uh, it will be available by the end of the, of the year because I have to to travel next week too. So I, I hope to, to, to publish it the, at the end of the year. Okay, cool. <laughs> Any more questions from the audience? So then we are a little bit early for a coffee break. Um, maybe you can discuss with him in the coffee break further. So thank you very much. Thank you.